first and second order approximations. The goal here is to take a high order system and approximate it with a simple model, a first or second order system. That's useful for several reasons. First, if I can approximate the system fairly well with a low order system, it makes designing compensators much easier. Uh, second, it makes mathematics much, much easier. Let's start with the first order system. If I have a first order approximation, I only have two degrees of freedom. The, about the only way I can write a first order system is A over S plus B. Note that the uh, pole is determined by B, the DC gain is determined by A over B. Also note that first order systems do not oscillate. As an example, let's find a simplified model that behaves almost the same as this third order system. If I take the step response in this M, I note that I have a single pole that decays, there is no oscillations. Likewise, this is a candidate for a first order model. So the goal is to find A and B. Experimentally, I can find A and B. I can find A and B by playing with the gains, playing with the numbers, till the two curves match about the best I can. B is changing the speed of the response. A over B tells the DC gain, so we get the speed just about right. Play with the gain. Looks like right around here. Right about here, A is equal to about 4, B is approximately 1. Gives a pretty good approximation. Note that what we wound up with is the first order model is roughly 4 over S plus 1. Note that what I essentially did, if I take that cubic and factor it, it's got poles at minus 1, minus 5, and minus 10. What I did is I matched the pole that was closest to the origin, turn the dominant pole. I also matched the DC gain. That's essentially what you do to find first order approximation. If a system has a single pole near the origin, that dominates the response, that's your dominant pole. Come up with a model that matches that dominant pole and matches the DC gain, and you've got a reasonable approximation for the system. Now let's look at second order systems. If I have a second order system, I'll have I help yeah, I could have oscillations. Here I've got the third order system. Comparing it to a second order model, expand this block, I've input A over S squared plus BS plus C, trust me, and I can vary those three gains. If I run the system and vary the gains A, this A changes the DC gain, B kind of adds friction, and C affects the speed of the system. If I play around with these, I can get the two to match up fairly well. For example here, played around with A, B, and C, and got a reasonable approximation for the system. Now note that I'm using a second order approximation because the system oscillates. To get oscillation, I have to have a complex pole. If I have a complex pole, I need its conjugate, giving me a second order system. What I wound up with is A was 20, B was 2, C was 10, giving me 20 over S plus 1 plus J3 and S plus 1 minus J3 when I factor it. Note that what I've essentially done, I've matched the DC gain and I've matched the dominant pole, giving me two systems to behave almost the same. Likewise, the rule of thumb for second order systems is identical to the same rule of thumb for first order systems. When you want to come up with a first or second order approximation, match the DC gain match the pole closest to the origin. If it's a single real pole, you've got a first order system. If it's a complex pole, you've got a second order system.